In the last episode, I left off when I was flying from Puerto Rico to Peru. But my COVID test results didn't arrive in time at my layover in Florida. I am trying to find the COVID testing place so I can catch a flight tomorrow because I can't get on the one that just happened five minutes ago. <laughs> of course. Fort Lauderdale Airport thankfully had a rapid PCR testing site and then I booked a motel close to the airport so I could rest before my next flight the next day. I could have done more research, but because of just the stress of a million other things going on and trying to relax the last couple of days since I've been off the boat, um, I neglected all of that and it's costing me some extra time and money. But I think I have everything I need. I filled out the declaration. The US is listed under ee.uu. Like I looked for Estados Unidos, like I looked, you know, USA, I looked for whatever I thought it could be under because it wasn't showing up and it's ee.uu. But when you're alone, the mistakes happen and you just have to learn to go with the flow and not beat yourself up about it and try to learn. Oh yeah, I need to call my mom and let her know what's going on. I'm on the plane to Peru. Completely covering your nose and mouth. Unless you are actively eating or drinking. Thank you for your attention and thank you for choosing Spare Airlines. I finally touched land in Peru and had to go through one checkpoint traveling from the airport to Miraflores an hour away. I booked an Airbnb apartment for a month in Cirquillo in the Miraflores district, which was great walking distance to everything. First thing I did was to get a prepaid SIM card to have a working phone. All the tourist booths were closed in the city, and the Incan shopping areas were mostly open, but with zero tourism. Food delivery appeared to be active, and the primary job for most of the locals. I felt like one of the few international tourists, but the city still seemed to be pretty open. There was an 11 p.m. curfew at this time, so for New Year's, everyone stayed in their homes and watched the fireworks over the city. It was beautiful. These are right in my face. <laughs> so I came out this morning to do a free guided tour, and it's like 10 minutes after, and I know I'm at the right spot, so I'm a little disappointed. But nobody's here. I want to learn some shit about this place. I guess I'll just have to read. But for now, I'm going to go walk around and hear the sounds of Sunday morning. For two weeks, I took Spanish classes for a couple of hours a day, but first had to have a phone interview to see what level I was at. Looking back at it is cringe-worthy to hear how terrible my Spanish was. Um, me, gusta, me gusta la comida. Uh, soy vegana, soy vegana. Uh, pero um, me gusta el supermercado uh, cerca de aquí. El malecón. Se llama malecón, sí. <laughs> de los Estados Unidos. Está bien si yo video porque yo tengo un canal de YouTube. I really enjoyed Peruana for these classes and Antonio was a wonderful teacher to help me brush up on the Spanish rules I had learned in college. So a lot of the schools here in Peru, I looked at probably 10 of them, most of them have recently switched to online. Some were already online, but most of them are switching over because of the new rules for travel to Peru. They changed on um, January 4th to where people have to quarantine now. They have to quarantine for two weeks, no matter what, whenever they come to Peru. I'm just 
super lucky I came when I did. I'm lucky to have this one-on-one -on -one time. Over time, there were some changes to the curfews and restrictions in Peru and each city. Sundays eventually required a lockdown, and the curfew bumped from 11 p.m. to 9 p.m. I'm kind of roaming the streets right now in Miraflores, and it's Sunday. I forgot it was Sunday. And I noticed that most shops on Sundays, like small mom and pop shops, are closed. My first couple of weeks in Lima, I was trying to get back to my old self because I was honestly in a deep funk for some time after arriving to Peru. I needed the space and time to digest the last several months of travel and the end of a relationship. So I have a really cool story that led to a big blessing in the middle of all of this. I decided to go to the center of Lima and take a tour to learn about some of the rich history about the city. My tour guide was named Edwin, who at the time I didn't realize was also the owner of the tour company. I was lucky enough to be guided by him because I booked last minute and he was the only English speaker available. Edwin and I really connected during the tour and I sensed his genuineness. Mr. Ramon Castilla is a good president that we like him because he abolishes slavery. In 1854, he abolished slavery, and since that time, the natives, indigenous, we are not slaves anymore. Uh, the rich people living on that time were not happy. That's why they decided to buy uh, Africans from Africa. They call the English. <laughs> the, the, the rule says the natives are not slaves anymore, all right? But we need servants, right? So the the document says anything about the, the black. So they call the English. Uh, to bring them Africans from Africa and start buying black people from the Callao's port next to the International Lima Airport. Mm. So a couple of years later, the same man abolished slavery for black people too, but the rich were not happy. They say, okay, if the rule says natives and black are not slaves anymore, but the rule don't say anything about the Chinese. So they call the Chinese. And the many Chinese got cheated, actually. The history said in, the, in China, in some small towns in China, says there were uh, new to say job opportunity in a new continent because many people didn't know there exists a new continent called America. This is your payment, uh, food included, accommodation included. I mean, good job. They came here by ship, and once they arrived in here, they went, took it as a prisoners, put a change on the neck on the shoe and the food hands and they were treated really bad. Wow. They were treated really bad, the Chinese. Wow. So a couple of years later, he, he said, he created a new document that said, no one can be a slave. He said, from today, no one, any culture, any people should be a slave of anyone. It turned out that he also had a nonprofit and he invited me to do some volunteer work. This was all so divine and timing. It is Monday morning in Peru. It's Martin Luther King Day. I'm really looking forward to today because I'm doing something, going places I've never been before. When I was doing the tour downtown uh, a couple days ago, my tour guide was sharing with me the social work that the tour company does with the money, with their revenue that they make. In the shanty towns, specifically the slums of Lima, there's a lot of women and children up there. And so they help, help them with uh, food, clothing, toys. And you know, I said I was gonna take this month completely off, actually like the next two months, off from volunteering because the last four months in Puerto Rico and Haiti, I burnt myself out as far as like not taking care of myself while volunteering and I worked full time all day, almost every single day. So I told myself for this month and Next month when I'm doing my yoga teacher training that I was just gonna focus on getting my health back, mentally and physically. But this is a divine appointment. Meeting this guy, I think I have something that I can help them with. I really wanna create a video for their company showing what they do behind the scenes because there's no proof of that and they don't really advertise it like they should. Uh, so that 
conscious mindful travelers will want to pay to do tours with them and give them business so i'm just going to show up help out wherever i can and i'm bringing you guys with me very clearly ask for permission to bring my camera in these types of environments like with nonprofits or companies that are you know going into communities that don't have a lot or just going into local communities in general having a camera is something that i'm very uncomfortable with so i try to be very conscious and careful ask for permission read the room because everyone's a little different especially if they don't really know why i have the camera so he encouraged me to bring it and says that it's going to be a really fun day so taking you guys with me Say hello. Hola, hello. Mi amigo Buenos nuevo. Días. I am Edwin. Edwin. Nice to meet you. My new friend. Everyone is welcome to Peru. Oh, so nice. Que bien. We are going to the south of Lima. Mm -hmm. And we are going to visit a shanty town called Nadine Heredia. Um, actually, Nadine Heredia is the name of a former uh, first lady uh, in Peru. She was the wife of a former president. So in this Nadine Heredia uh, community, Shantitan community, uh, lives many single women and many families are living under uh, deep poverty and extreme poverty. Our list, every week we have a list of uh, Shantitan communities to visit and this is next. Okay. And we will stop in the local market located in the shanty town. Okay. So that way we will support the economy. Well, I was born in a shanty town. I know how it feels uh, you need things. I also built soup kitchens because soup kitchens is priority. Uh, look, if I am here because I survive because a, because a soup kitchen, mm -hmm. I realized that on top of that, what I have to bring first is knowledge. Because otherwise people always will be taking, making the same mistakes again and again. That's why we always uh, try to teach them and help them with information. Edwin shared with me a lot about the food issues and goals he has to help the shanty towns. Poverty can be this area. Mm -hmm. Deep poverty, where you see the houses in the middle of a mountain, and extreme poverty on top of a mountain. Oh, the higher one. Yeah, for any reason, there is a kind of local law in here that, that says as high as you live means poorer you are. No tu cara, ¿sí? controlling mafia, controlling people. Mm. Uh, in May, I was the only one organization who was in here because it was really tough. Well, July, August, was possible other organizations could go to Shanty Town. And, uh, and when I told them about that almost 70% of the city is poverty in Shanty Town, and I talked to them about poverty at the two levels. And they were straight forward to me and say, how can I prove that to them? Yeah. And they took them in here. And they couldn't believe it. Yeah. On their map, those places don't exist. Because for the government, those places do not exist. Wow. 
In order to volunteer or support Edwin's nonprofit, please go visit them on Instagram and book Haku tours when in Lima. Most people they shut it down, they have a strong mind. Yeah, but do do other people recognize that? No, because uh, you know I study that. the people. You know In that. Anthropology, you study people, and you know this. But other people actually say the opposite. Say, no, this is a uh, people, poor people don't think well, they are stupid. They got, these people don't discriminate. Estoy saludable? Claro. Ok. Claro. Antonio. Antonio, estás pasando buen tiempo. ¿Estás listo? In the next episode, there will be some more fun to be had in Lima before I make my way to Cusco Sacred Valley here in Peru. So stay tuned for the next episode, hit that notification bell, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.